Atrial fibrillation ablation is a bit of an unusual procedure because we don't really know when we complete the procedure whether we've helped fix the patient's atrial fibrillation. We really have to wait for several months during what we call the healing phase to find out how the patient is actually doing. We want to know how they do five years, seven years, eight years down the road. And so it becomes a very important process to look at all of the information that we have available to try to be able to improve the procedure, make the procedure safer and quicker, and also to be able to help counsel patients as to what their individual chance is of being cured by their atrial fibrillation ablation. When we look at how we do the data, how we manage it, we think of it as really in four parts. The first part is really just collecting a lot of information about each individual patient before we ever do the procedure. So we collect an enormous amount of demographic information the first time we see a patient. You'll be asked to fill out a lot of questionnaires. The physician that sees you when you come in for a consultation will review all your medical history. We'll probably ask you to get records from your doctor so that we can very carefully characterize clinical factors about you, the patient, that will help us counsel you and what your outcome might be. We want to know what symptoms you've had because this procedure is primarily designed to improve your quality of life. The second part of looking at our results is examining what we do during the procedure, how we manage the patient, how we manage the anesthesia, and how that affects our complication rate and our long-term outcome. When we first started doing these more than 10 years ago, this procedure took four to six hours. We were putting in our little catheters that we do the procedure from both groins. A lot of people still use both groins and neck, and a lot of people still take four to six hours to do this procedure. But through careful evaluation of our results and the procedure, we've now managed to get this down to where we can do most patients in under two hours. The time it takes really strongly relates with the complication rate. When we started, the complication rate for serious complications was as high as four or five percent. Through careful analysis, we've now gotten that down to about one percent or even less. We started using general anesthesia, which made it nicer for the patient. You remain still, you wake up, you don't even know anything's been done. We learned how to do the procedure just using a single groin, so we don't have to stick catheters in your both groins and in your neck and under the collarbones. The fewer places you stick, there's just fewer places where you can have bleeding complications. We're one of the first centers in Northern California to get the open irrigated tip catheter. A lot of people were holding that catheter in one spot and burning for 60 seconds at a time with low power. And we developed techniques for giving higher power for shorter times, which dramatically shortened the procedure time and also turned out to be safer and gave us more durable lesions so that we had more success several years after the procedure. We learned how to manage the blood thinners during the case so that we don't have a lot of bleeding complications. It's extremely rare now to have any bleeding complications. We also were the pioneers of new, using a new radio frequency needle that helps us gain access into the left atrium where the pulmonary veins are that we're trying to isolate. All of these new things that we've developed, we've shared and published articles in the scientific literature and peer review journals so that not only will our patients benefit, but hopefully other patients around the world and other physicians can learn from our experiences. The third part is following the patient over the long term. That's how are you doing? We put monitors on the patients. We try to see how you're doing over many years. We encourage the patients to let us know if they have any AFib relapses or any issues, even years after the procedure. The doctors who send us many of the patients are very cooperative and understand the importance of this follow-up, and they help provide us records about how you're doing long-term. We don't cure every patient with one procedure. We wish we could. Nobody in the world can do that. But we've learned the importance of which patient should come back for another procedure. We encourage almost all patients, if the first one doesn't work, to have a second one. And that's an important part of the process. The long-term outcome can be figured out by a lot of variables that we collect at that very first visit. For instance, 
One of the important factors is how long you've been in atrial fibrillation. It doesn't matter if you've had AFib for 20 years, but it matters how long your longest episode is. If you always come out of atrial fibrillation in less than a week on your own, you can have as high as a 94% five to seven year uh, freedom from atrial fibrillation. If on the other hand, you're stuck in atrial fib for more than a year, then your long-term outcome may drop down to about 65 or 70%. It matters how big your left atrium is. That's another thing that we want to determine when we see you in the office. And it matters how many antiarrhythmic drugs that you failed beforehand. Every time you fail a drug, the disease progresses, it gets harder for us to do an ablation. That doesn't mean that we can't get rid of the atrial fibrillation in many patients who've been in AFib for a long time who failed a lot of drugs, but the expectation of the patient needs to be a little bit lower that they're not going to be up in that 90 to 95 percent AFib free group. And there's a small number of patients where when we examine our data and their clinical characteristics, we may conclude their chance of a successful ablation is really only 20 or 30 percent. And for those patients, we don't want to do procedures that don't have that much chance of helping them. So we may guide them into other alternative treatments for their atrial fibrillation to help them improve the quality of their life. And then the final part is looking at all the data that we've collected and trying to figure out which patients were made free of their atrial fibrillation for the duration and which ones had relapses and maybe had to have another procedure done or we couldn't help them at all. It's important that every center doing this monitor their patients basically forever. We kind of joke with the patients and say, once we do this ablation, you're going to be our patient for the rest of your life. We hope that when patients are thinking about an AFib ablation, they'll go to our website, which is at www.siliconvalleycardiology and look at this data. We try to present it for you to look at come to your own conclusions, and then come in and talk to us because each patient is an individual. When we look at all of your clinical characteristics, your left atrial size, your age, your gender, all of those factors, we can give you a pretty realistic expectation of what to expect in terms of a long-term outlook, five, 10 years after the procedure, what your chance might be of taking two procedures or rarely a third procedure to be cured. It's very, very important to know that information from any center where you have an ablation. You really wanna ask the doctors how many they've done, what their complication rates are, and what their long-term outcomes are years after the procedure because that's what the patients are really looking for. All centers that are doing this should be able to give you that information and if they can't, you ought to look to a center where you can get that information up front. Thank you.